Hey, I'm Chris, an engineer here at National Instruments, and I'm going to show you how to work with for loops in LabVIEW. So for loops are a little bit different than your traditional while loop. While while loops are designed to continuously execute code until a certain stop condition is met, for loops are designed to execute a piece of code a predetermined number of times. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to LabVIEW here, and you can see I've already got some code placed down, and you'll see a while loop, and inside that while loop I've got a wait function so the code will only execute once every one second. And then I've also got some code placed here that will generate a random number between 1 and 10 and output it to this indicator on the front panel. So you can see as I run it, once per second we're going to get a random number here in the indicator. So if I want to add a for loop to this code, um, normally I would right click on the block diagram, go to structures, and you can see for loop here, I could drag that onto the block diagram. But in this case, since I already have a while loop, I can right click on the edge of the while loop and choose replace with for loop. So you can see that a for loop looks a little bit different than your traditional while loop. There's no longer a stop condition terminal, and so I can delete my stop button. And you'll also see at the top left of the loop, there's a loop count terminal. And so we can wire up a value here, we'll right click, and create constant and this value will determine the number of times that our loop is going to execute. So now you can see when I press the run button the code is going to execute five times and create five different random numbers and after the fifth time it's going to stop. So for loops are also useful for working with arrays specifically for creating arrays or iterating through an array. And so on my block diagram, I can actually use the for loop I already have to create an array of five random values. So I'm going to wire the output of my random number generator code to the edge of the for loop. And you can see now I'll have a terminal here, and it looks a little bit different than a typical terminal that we see on loops. And if we highlight over it, we'll see it's an auto index terminal. So the auto indexing function will automatically remember the values from every iteration of the loop and output an array of all those values. And so I can right click on that terminal and go to create indicator and now on my front panel you'll see I have my array and I'm going to drag that to show five different elements. And so now when I run my code again it's going to execute through five times to create my five random numbers and when it's done you can see I have an array of my five values. So I can also use for loops to iterate through an array. And so on my block diagram, I'm going to right click, go to structures, and I'm going to add a second for loop that we're going to use to iterate through the array I just created. And so we'll take the output of that array and wire it to the for loop. And you'll see again I have the auto indexing terminal. And so this time it's going to work the opposite way and it's going to each loop um, extract each individual value. And in this case, since it's auto-indexing, I no longer have to wire up a value to my loop count terminal. The auto-indexing is going to automatically determine the number of values in the array and only execute that amount of times. So I'm going to right-click in the array and add some timing. So we'll add another wait function and have this wait execute uh, for a thousand milliseconds or one second. And then we'll right click on our auto indexing terminal and go to create indicator. And we'll see this over on the front panel. And so each iteration of the second loop, we're going to see each indiv individual value of the array. So now when I run the VI, the first loop is going to execute five times. And then it's going to output those values into my array. And then now the second loop is going to execute through each of those values in the array. And so there you have it. That's how you work with four loops in LabVIEW.